My wife and I have owned this Vivitar Vivicam 5199 camera for around seven years. During that time it has given us good service. It was not expensive, it cost us somewhere between 45 and 50 pounds. About six months ago the uh, miniature press release switch for activating the flash circuit ceased working. When I compare its function with one of the other switches on this camera it does not make a click noise. The reason for this is the internal domed spring has collapsed. Let me quickly show you the principle concerning this in a couple of uh, quick sketches. There is the domed spring I was talking about with contact material underneath it. There's a plastic press button there. When we apply pressure to the top of the uh, uh, press button the spring goes down and it makes contact across these two points here. What usually happens is the centre of the dome spring starts to tear away and it causes it to make a little hole and that part of it falls through. And of course when that happens the switch will need replacing. Of course there is no alternative but to uh, either discard of this camera or replace the uh, miniature switch. Unfortunately I no longer have access to a controlled hot air soldering system or a low melting solder paste. My only option is to uh, make use of a conventional soldering iron and multi-core rosin solder. So please wish me luck. I'll certainly need it. <laughs> <laughs> there is the uh, offending press release switch and that is its replacement. I have to be very careful here because its replacement switch cost me all of 12 pence from, uh, if anyone is interested, CPC. That's its ordering code, those are the people. Right, I have soldering iron, solder and desoldering braid ready to hand so give me a moment or two and I shall be back when I have removed the offending switch from this uh, printer circuit board. There he is look. Completely now removed from the board. I shall now fit the replacement. Back in a moment. There it is. Soldered in place. And this camera is now ready for testing. Now that the camera is uh, back together, I'll uh, install two alkaline batteries and the uh, memory card and uh, run a quick test. The uh, flash switch button sounds uh, quite promising. Right, here he goes. Batteries in place. Memory card in place. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds okay. A little flash 
there is working. Excellent. Right, I will take a uh, snapshot of the part of this workshop that is directly behind where you usually uh, see me working in previous videos. One moment. I don't know whether you can uh, see that very well but I have just took that snapshot it is a part of this workshop that is directly behind where I usually work. Um, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, this camera repair has uh, been successful. Now, there is a point to all of this, and that is that before you discard of anything, examine, uh, examine it and see whether it can be repaired, or whether you can repair it. You'd be surprised what you can do. Now that uh, my little camera is back to fully functional condition, I'll brew me some tea to have with a couple of slices of toast and peanut butter. I absolutely love peanut butter. Goodness. I better switch my toaster off, otherwise I'll be presenting myself with uh, a burnt offering. <laughs> yep, yeah, it just takes two slices of, of bread and you put them in, you do one side and then when, that's, when those sides are done you open the doors at the front and at the back, turn the bread round and then you do the other side. <laughs> Goodness, I certainly hoard some strange things, don't I? This old toaster was produced in Great Britain by GEC, General Electric Company, sometime during the interwar period. I have the um, instruction card just here and with it it's also got a little bit of liter literature about the 12 month guarantee and over on the other side it's got um, instructions for use and um, also how to connect it to a mains plug. Whilst taking my little snack I'll give this defiant transistor radio model A53 an airing. Some program on Radio 4. This is a long wave and medium wave radio only. It uh, belonged to my late grandma. She purchased it new sometime during 1959. I remember her listening to it whilst she cooked and baked and did general housework. My wife is uh, out at the hairdressers at the moment. From there she will catch a bus that will take her to Walmart, better known over here as Asda. There she'll buy our weekly victuals until she phones me to pick her up from there with our car. I'll resume reading this book. Tales from Chaucer my mother first introduced me to uh, Chaucer when I was around about ten and a half to eleven. This particular book I've read around about three or four times over the past 
10 to 15 years. On this occasion I am now up to the pardoner's tale, the three rioters. <laughs> no doubt I'll finish Chaucer before my wife phones me to pick her up from Asda. So I'll make a start at rereading this book, The Prophet, Khalil Gibran. In the past when I've read this book it has proved to be a quick but very beautiful read. So, until next time, this is me, Phil, saying bye-bye, 73s.